Hello, my name is Lance Drake. Today we'll be going over how to create a data store within data services. First thing you do is when you go into the designer, you will go over here to your local object library and we'll scroll over here to the actual data stores tab. Click on that and I go ahead and I right click within the workspace area. I'm going to go ahead and select new. Right off the bat, you'll see that it's, I'm going to go ahead and name it. I'm going to call it my target DW because that's going to be the data warehouse that I'm going to be writing to. And there's more than one type of data store. You, you can have adapter, databases, JDE, Oracle, PeopleSoft. Today we're going to be working with databases. So I'm going to select the database type. And from there you'll see all the different database options that we have within data services at, at the box. You got your data federator, Informix, SQL Server, MySQL. You can actually have an ODBC connection in case there's a particular format that is not supported by data services, but you can connect to it through ODBC. You have that option as well. Or maybe you that's just how your, your company standards are. They want all connections within a ODBC local to their environment. Now you have that option. We're going to be working with SQL Server. And the database version that, that we're going to be working with is going to be 2008. I'm going to go ahead and make the connection. I'm putting in the server and the database name. Just like, just like you would any regular ODBC connection or any other connection instance, you're going to want to define your, your server and your database and then also your login credentials. And once that is in place, go ahead and click apply. It, it went ahead and accepted it. Some of the options that you have below are the Windows AD. If you select yes, it will use your Windows AD credentials. Now during runtime, it's going to use the service that's the user designated to the service that is running the actual job. In time, it's going to be using the, the username and password that you use when you log in. We do not have a server, so I'm going to select no. You can also set a default row commit. When it writes, when the data services writes to the database, it will generate by default 1,000 rows at a time. You can change this here. Again, you have your overflow and some of the database defaults listed below. I leave these as the database default. Now there are some instances like with SQL Server, you have a GUID. Well, any unsupported data type, we go ahead and say make it a VARCHAR 255 so you can still properly read and write from, from the database and it will store it on the database as its data type, but it's going to read it in as a VARCHAR so it doesn't kill your actual process. You can also have multiple configurations as well. You can add a new one. You can duplicate one. You can rename one, and where this comes into play is that if you're migrating between different environments or you have one ETL server that you want to connect to different environments, maybe one's dev, test, or prod, you can now have one data store with a different connection, and you just depict during runtime which configuration you want to use, and it'll point to that server. You go ahead and click Apply again. You'll see over here on the left-hand side is the data store has generated where now I can import any SQL functions. You can use template tables which is out of the box data services which is a temporary in terms of is a temporary table but just so that you know that when you actually run the job it's going to create as an actual table on the server. So if you're trying to do a cleanup keep that in mind that you'll you will have to go to the server and remove the actual physical table from there. This is how you create a data store with a connection to a database. Thank you for joining.